This video is about macular degeneration. This is part two about prevention and treatment. Hello, my name is Craig Blackwell. I'm an ophthalmologist in Santa Cruz, California. What we're making here is an informational video about macular degeneration. This is the second of two parts. In this part, we're going to cover the medical aspects of macular degeneration. We will look at what I think are some exciting things, in particular how knowing the biology of the aging retina leads to strategies for prevention and treatment that are a big improvement over their predecessors. In part one, we showed how aging changes in the retina evolve into macular degeneration, which may end up as either the dry atrophic form or the wet neovascular form. Here is a quick review of what we covered. In the dry form of macular degeneration, what you can see is the gradual buildup of drusen, the yellow spots that are clumps of debris located under the retina. What you cannot see are a number of other processes going on that cause gradually increasing stress on the supporting RPE cells, which eventually cause them to die off. As RPE cells are lost, the photoreceptors they support also die off. The end stage of this dry pathway is called atrophic or geographic macular degeneration. Seen here is the pale area demarcated by the arrows. This results in loss of central vision. Sometimes as the dry degeneration progresses, it can suddenly switch on growth of new blood vessels under the retina. Because the new vessels are fragile and leaky, you end up with a picture like this. The large red spot is a hemorrhage under the retina. This causes a rapid loss of vision in that area. Now, let us talk about the treatment of macular degeneration. Here are the leading risk factors for macular degeneration. Number one, age. The graph on the left illustrates the rise in macular degeneration in, with age in whites. This shows the result from six large population studies from such diverse places as the US, Europe, and Australia. On this page, the top row shows the occurrence of any macular degeneration, the bottom row, advanced macular degeneration. On the left side are graphs of macular degeneration in whites. Compare those with the graphs on the right, which show much less occurrence of macular degeneration in blacks. The best guess about the effective race has to do with increased melanin in the RPE and its ability to reduce oxidative damage. The next risk factor is smoking. Current smokers have about two and a half times the risk of late macular degeneration compared to non-smokers. Family history, having a first degree relative like a parent or sibling with macular degeneration increases your risk also about two and a half times. Complement factor H is a protein involved in inhibiting inflammation. It has several forms, some of which are associated with a significant increase in risk. Genetic testing might play a bigger role in the future. Low dietary intake of antioxidant vitamins and zinc is also a risk. So what can you do about macular degeneration? One of the most interesting studies of the last decade, at least in the eye world, was the age-related eye disease study, abbreviated AREDS. There isn't time to describe it in detail, so we'll do a short overview. About 5,000 people aged 55 to 80 participated Half the participants were given a supplement containing the antioxidant vitamins A, C, and E, and the minerals zinc and copper. The other half received a placebo. Those people were followed for 10 years looking at development of cataract and macular degeneration, the question being, did those who took the supplement have any different outcome? For macular degeneration, the outcome they were looking at was the development of advanced AMD, meaning severe vision loss from dry atrophic or wet neovascular damage. Here are the 10-year results. At the outset, people were divided into four groups according to the severity of their AMD, one being mild to four moderate but not advanced. Within each level, those who got the placebo are denoted by the dashed lines, those who got the supplement by the solid lines. You can see in each category, those who took the supplement did better than those who got the placebo. It did not stop vision loss or even have it, but in each group, severe vision loss was noticeably reduced. A couple of extra things to know. 
During the 1990s, other studies showed that in people who smoked, supplementing with vitamin A as beta-carotene proved a significant extra health risk. Because of that, the study allowed people who smoked to switch to a supplement that did not contain vitamin A. Later data, also from ARED, showed that people who had diets high in omega-3 long-chain polyunsaturated fatty acids had reduced progression to advanced AMD as well. AREDS 2 underway now is using lutein and zeaxanthine in place of vitamin A. We have talked about the two forms of advanced AMD, dry atrophic and wet neovascular. We're going to spend the next few minutes discussing the wet neovascular kind. This illustration shows where those new vessels are located. Here you can see the tendril of a new vessel breaking through Bruch's membrane, invading the space under the retina. This is an ominous development because it leads to leakage, bleeding, and scar tissue with significant loss of vision. Treatment for wet neovascular macular degeneration took a big step forward in the 1980s with development of laser treatment to cauterize leaking vessels under the retina. In this photo, the red patch is a small hemorrhage right under the center of the macula. A laser could be used to cauterize the leaking area. In the photo, the overlapping white rings illustrate where laser spots would be applied, destroying the vessels, but unfortunately also destroying the retina in that area, which would knock out an area of central vision. But that would keep the vessels and blood from spreading and damaging more retina. In this case, a small amount of retina was sacrificed to save a larger area. In the last few years, we have come to understand that the distressed retina produces a chemical signal called VEGF that is responsible for the growth of the new vessels. Medications have been developed that block the VEGF signal, which in turn can make new vessels go away without laser treatment. In 2006, this study was published showing the result with a VEGF inhibitor, Lucentis, after two years of treatment. The horizontal line in the middle represents no vision change. The descending blue line shows vision slowly declining with no treatment. The red and orange lines show something entirely different. They show vision improvement. This was a milestone development. Because of this success, Lucentis and its twin Avastin have rapidly become very widely used. There are more treatment approaches in development based on the biology of the aging retina and the first steps are underway for development of an implanted light-sensing retinal chip that may someday restore some degree of useful vision after retinal damage. For now, if you have macular degeneration, consider taking a vitamin supplement as it may help slow progress of the degeneration. Omega-3 fatty acids are probably also helpful. Number two, if you have dry macular degeneration, the biggest risk is that it could convert to the wet kind. If that happens, early detection is the key factor in determining visual outcome, so it's important to monitor your vision. You can use a square grid like this, or you could use a printed page with straight lines. It is important to have your reading glasses on and test each eye individually. If you have dry macular degeneration, you normally expect very slow changes in central vision over months to years of time. If leakage develops, there's usually distortion of straight lines in central vision that progresses over a relatively short period of time, a few days to a week or two. If you have macular degeneration and notice progressive changes in vision, you should call your ophthalmologist promptly. Patients often ask if they'll go blind from macular degeneration. The answer to that is at worst, macular degeneration will take away central vision but will not affect peripheral vision, so you still should still be able to navigate. Even if vision is reduced, there are a number of aids that may be helpful. For example, large print reading material, high power reading glasses, handheld magnifiers, and closed circuit TV devices to show magnified images on a TV or computer screen. This summary is meant for your education and does not replace examination and discussion with your ophthalmologist. More informa information is available at blackwelleyesight.com. Thank you.